Water is the most essential element of life. We need it for drinking and sanitation. We need it to produce food. We need it to produce power and cool our power plants. And we need it for maintaining our ecosystem services. So what, what's going to happen with the growing population? We already have problems with water. Not everyone has enough access to water. 15% of the world population lack access to clean water. That number is 50% in sub-Saharan Africa. The modern people, the developed ones, are also changing their diet. Ironically, they prefer meat to vegetable, the unhealthy diet. That means 15,000 liters of water instead of 2,000 liters of water per kilogram of food. So to feed the two billion extra people joining us on this planet, we need to raise 60% more water. We are already bankrupt. We don't have that much water. We have to increase the water withdrawal by 50% in the developing world and 18% in the rest of the world. The planet is getting dry. Water is becoming more scarce. Two billion people are expected to live in dry areas of the, of the planet with extreme water scarcity. Add to this the pressure of climate change, which is going to reduce the rainfall and increase evaporation. We have already exhausted our surface water resources. Lakes are going dry. Rivers are going dry. And now we are tapping the groundwater. The fossil resources which are, going, which are not going to get replenished. And things like recycling and redrinking our urine would not help much. Every day around the world, 1,500 children under the age of five die from diarrhea. That's 500,000 children dying every year. Seven mile-high stadiums full of children dying of diarrhea. Now, before you came here today, you woke up, you brushed your teeth, you took a shower, because you can. You have clean water, safe water. It's always there. You don't think twice about it. 25% of the world doesn't have access to clean water. Over 33% doesn't have access to a toilet. This is a crisis, a global water and sanitation crisis. It affects billions of people in dire situations all over the world, men, women, children. However, it is mostly a women's issue because the greatest impact is on women. This is why water is a women's issue. There are three reasons why. The first is time. The burden of time of women and girls collecting water and bringing it home. This happens in the majority of households in developing countries. Hours a day, miles a day, they go to places like creeks and they bring it home or maybe a community well, better, a community tap, we call faucets taps, and they bring their babies and they bring their daughters to carry water too. Giselle knows what it's like because when she brings it home, it's clean or dirty or somewhere in between. You're never quite sure if they'll get sick or they might die like what happened to Maria. Now this is Giselle, and this is her walk for water every day in Rwanda, up this dusty, dirty road in bare feet. She walks a mile there, a mile back, in the morning, in the evening, four miles, four hours a day. And when she gets to her well, she fills up her jerry can with water. It holds five gallons. And she needs a friend to help get it on her head because it weighs 40 pounds. 40 pounds. That's like putting a child on your head, and then she's got to walk all the way home. It's really heavy. We need to get water closer to where people live, ideally in their homes or in schools, just like we have it. Why should anyone have anything less? And imagine what this would do to your daughter's education if she had to walk for water every day, day in, day out. Kate runs our program in Malawi. She did walk for water every day she was fortunate because she also was able to get an education. But her walk for water began at five and ended at eight. Every day, day in, day out, three hours a day. Today, Kate wants her daughter, Taku, 
and all the other girls in Malawi never to have to walk for water. She wants them to use their heads for thinking, not for carrying water. So if we can get girls like Taku to go to school and stay in school, then the dreams mothers have for their daughters to have even better lives than their own can become a reality. Today, many mothers wish they didn't have daughters. So carrying water is not the only thing that affects girls' education. The third reason why water is a women's issue is toilets, or lack thereof. Most schools in the developing countries don't have toilets. It means girls like Asha, when they hit puberty and get their periods, they often drop out of school because there's no place to change their pads. So now that we're talking about toilets, I love toilets. <laughs> Let's just be clear what we're talking about. We can have flush toilets, we can have squat toilets, or imagine any pit latrine you may have ever used, maybe while camping. They're all toilets. And remember, a third of the world, no toilets at all. So what do people do? They go over wherever they can. Bushes in the woods and open spaces. The technical term for this is open defecation. And when it rains, all this human feces, all this poop washes into the community water supply. And people go with their jugs, and they scoop it up, and they take it home, and they drink it, and they cook with it. Poop. So here they are, the three reasons why water is a women's issue. So how are we going to solve this crisis? Well, the solution is to educate, build, and invest. Educate people all over the world why clean water and toilets are important. Build our missing infrastructure, but also build institutions that can operate and maintain this infrastructure for generations to come. Now, this is exactly what we did in this country over the past 100 to 200 years. I think we need to pay it forward. Don't you agree? Yeah. <laughs> and invest. It's going to cost $50 billion a year to build this missing infrastructure. And that will take us to 2030. 2030 is an important year. That is the year that 193 nations of the world have agreed upon to get water and toilets for everyone. Today, we spend about $10 billion between government, corporations, and philanthropy. So we need to step it up, and it's going to take additional work from all of us to close this gap. The beauty of really doing something about water and sanitation is that we could also improve the situation on other urgent international goals. We would, of course, quickly and radically reduce child mortality. It comes natural after what I've said. We would reduce the problems connected to maternal health. We would reduce the problems of gender equality, because it is the girls and the women that carry the burden in all respects in this way, in this area. We would, in fact, reduce extreme poverty and improve the conditions for education for not least the girls again. So this shows the interdependence of the issues we are talking about. We need to see in today's world that everything is related. In fact, I would say that there is no peace without development, including water and sanitation. But there is no development without peace. And there is none of the above. No peace, no development, again, without the respect of human rights. And remember, the right to water is a human right.